A quick update regarding what we decided to do regarding the virtual ASCII. What we've decided to do is to create a team with channels for as many students as there are in a round. And these channels do not have the students as members, but rather the organizers will start a meeting with those students uh, at the time of the exam. Uh, and the students will be guests, so they will not be part of a team, so that they will not be able to access anything uh, inside. And examiners are actually owners of the team, or they can just be members, but the thing is they will be able to actually do rounds on the students. So, for example, if I've got over here three students, and we've got three examiners, the examiner will first go, for example, uh, examiner number one will go to student number one, move to, stu to student number three, and then to student number two, and then three. Likewise, uh, examiner number three will start with student number three, then go to one and two. The idea was that, we well, we had to do some training for the examiners regarding that. Um, initially, we tried we tried it the other way around. We tried having the examiners in the channels so that because we wanted to reduce the number of things the examiners had to do uh, while putting faith in students' um, like technological abilities to be able to move from one channel to the other. But I suppose that wasn't really too hard for the examiners to learn how to do. Um, so yeah, we ended up just teaching our examiners how to jump from one channel to the next and to join the meetings. We did some uh, training sessions with them. And we taught them uh, as much as we could about what they needed to know about how to use Microsoft Teams. And it's worked so far. It's, it's, um, it's been working fairly well. All right, regarding the issue of timing, what we ended up doing but for now, they ended. Uh, um, they've added some new features to Microsoft Teams. Like right now, you can one thing you can do that you couldn't do before is uh, if you created the meeting, you can end it yourself. Uh, by uh, they added that as an extra option before all participants had to leave uh, for the meeting to end. But other than that. Regarding the timing, we solved that by, well, the students are not allowed to come to the university. So what we did is we managed to uh, get the examiners to come to the university campus um, as if they're in their usual rooms. But um, we actually picked like two of the largest rooms we've got and we put an examiner, like we socially distanced uh, the uh, or we put some distance between the examiners. And we did that so that we could have a PowerPoint presentation that's got the um, time sound indications, right? Uh, like, start now, the station is over, please move to the next channel, whatever. Okay, but these instructions are now to the examiners rather than the students, and the students just have to stay uh, in their own channels. So yes, um, before our stations used to be seven minutes long. Now we've made them, the actual stations used to be seven minutes long, but students could move from one room to the other within something like 30 seconds. So that's what we did. We added 30 seconds for the examiner to tell the student what the instructions are and what the case scenario is, like just a ha like a summary. Like this patient is a 55 year old male, he's come, he's come to the emergency department for the, uh, like he, he's just come to the emergency department. Please, please take history and answer the following and answer the questions that follow, basically. And so it's just a couple of lines of instructions. Uh, students didn't find that difficult. We wanted to display it to them on the screen, but we just figured that just takes away from the 30 seconds the student has got before uh, the station starts. So we just figured we'd tell them 
we'd verbalize the, uh, the station instructions to the students. Um, these 30 seconds, you could go to like, I don't know why we decided on 30, we could have gone to 40 or 45, but um, we just decided on 30. I think based on what we've done, the mocks we've done with the students now, I think because the computers we're using are laggy. If it's if your computers are not laggy, then 30 seconds should be fine. But if they're a bit laggy, then 40 or 45 seconds should be quite enough if your examiners know uh, exactly what to do. Otherwise, you may need up to a minute extra. But probably with training, with uh, after training uh, examiners, then 30 seconds is manageable, even with, not with computers that aren't exactly great. And another thing is that um, usually, in, well, in, in our usual OSCEs, we found that some external examiners like to be merciful or something, and they wanted to, they like to spend a few extra seconds with a student so that the student can finish up what they were saying, like the idea, their sentence or whatever. But um, with the virtual thing, you, you can't really afford that because everybody, you've got, a lot, a lot is at stake. A lot is at stake right now, and uh, it's not as simple. Like before, you could go physically and tell the students to move to the next station or tell the examiner yourself that, okay, station is over, like finish up, and like the, the next student is on his way. Is on his has is on his or her way, but um, yeah, right now you can't really afford um, much extra time. So when the station is over, the station is over. You just gotta move on. Um, and we're using Google Forms to. We've we've um, basically transcribed our um, physical checklists to digital format uh, using Google Forms. We've, we haven't really had to adjust the marking scheme that much. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's mostly the same. And, you know, taking screenshots of the, uh, like what we've done is we've taken screenshots of our checklists or you can just write them down. So. Like if the student mentions four of these, if the student covers, you know, onset duration, location, severity, whatever, uh, then you give the student um, a certain, a specific number of marks. So how it runs is you just make the window of the Microsoft Teams on one side of the screen and on the other side you've got the uh, Google form at the ready. And the only problem is is not the the only problem is that you're not making eye contact with the student as you because you know you need to look at the student and you need to look at your Google form, so it's like screen to screen contact rather than um, eye to eye contact because the students looking at you as well rather than at the uh, camera, so it's not exactly eye to eye contact. Um, and most of the students, they just, you know, they, they keep, um, because they, they use chairs that can rotate, so they keep doing this. <laughs> Maybe it's because they're nervous or it's their first time. But that's some of the stuff, um, some of the minor stuff. Like, we're just, we're happy to do as much as we can in these times. And um, to the best of our abilities, you know. And... So that's that's what we've reached up to now. Unfortunately, we've got some examiners who are not very technologically. What's the word? Um, slips my mind now, but they're not very um, proficient at using technology. So they might require one-to-one -one sessions with people who know how to use it or they might need to attend extra workshops or something, but 
like I have faith that um unless they they are like unless they have not used the computer which is e extremely rare if um if at all existent then uh, then that's a that's an issue like you're better off um dealing with a with an examiner who's at least used a computer before but uh yeah that's the current situation